This production is brought to you by the University of Edinburgh. So question four is all about calculating the factorial of a non-negative integer using a for loop. So you can see I've created a script with some comments at the top. And in my variable dictionary, I have a variable called n, which is going to be the number that the user inputs to take the factorial of. I have a vector x, which is going to start at 0 and range to n minus 1. And I have a result variable that's going to hold the result of the factorial calculation. So the first thing we're going to do in our script is get the number from the user to take the factorial of. And to do that, we'll use the input function that you've used before. And we're going to assign that to the variable n. Now later, we're going to modify this script to check whether the user has indeed entered a non-negative integer. But for just now, we'll just assume that he or she has, and we'll do the calculation of the factorial part using a for loop. So we'll define our for loop. And we're going to define our loop counter x to range from 0 to n minus 1. And if you have a look at the factorial algorithm, you can see that each term that is multiplied together is n minus 0, n minus 1, n minus 2, all the way up to n minus n minus 1. So our loop counter is essentially providing the term in the right hand side of that bracket, i.e. 0 to n minus 1. So our result is going to be the result on the previous iteration multiplied by n minus our loop counter x. And we're going to use the display command to display the result when we're finished. MATLAB beeps there just to tell us that we missed the square bracket of the start of that expression. So we'll put that in. And before we go into our for loop, we need to make sure that result is defined. So let's test that. We'll just run our script. And we'll test it with 5, since we know that that should produce the answer 120. And it does. So our factorial algorithm is working now. And we now just need to modify our script slightly to test whether the user has entered a non-negative number or not. So to do that, we're going to use an if and an else if statement. So we'll say if n, which is our user entered number, is less than 0, i.e. it's negative, then display an error message. So that's tested for the case where n is negative. We also want to test for the case where n is a floating point number. And to do that, we're going to use the MATLAB function floor. And you can check the help file for floor, but essentially floor just rounds down a floating point number to the nearest integer. So our else if condition is going to be if n minus floor n does not equal 0. And we'll just put some brackets around that to make sure it's properly calculated. Then we must have a floating point number. So we need to display an error. And if none of these conditions are true, then we must actually have a positive integer which is what we can take the factorial of. So we'll use the else statement and we'll leave our factorial calculation in as the code that we want to run when the else statement completes. So before we test our script, we're just going to tidy up the code a bit. 
And to do this, I'm going to select all of the code, right click and choose Smart Indent. And you'll see that MATLAB has just indented our factorial calculation. So you can easily see that it's part of the else condition. So let's run the script now. And we'll test the case by entering a negative integer. And you see we get the right error message. Now we'll run it again and we'll test a floating point number. And again we get the correct error message. And lastly, we'll just try entering our factorial 5 to check that we still compute the factorial correctly. And that works too. So question 5 is all about using a while loop to calculate a series that approximates an exact value. And the idea is that we're going to use the while loop to calculate a number of terms in this series. And when we have enough terms to get within 0.01% of the exact value, then we want our while loop to stop. So you can see in the variable dictionary, I've defined a variable called s exact, which is the exact value that we're aiming for. I've defined a tolerance, which is where we should stop when we get close to the exact value. n is the number of terms in the summation and the result just holds the results of the summation. So I've defined the exact value and I've defined the tolerance and you'll notice that I've converted the percentage tolerance that was given in the question into an absolute value. So now I'm ready to construct the while loop and the condition for the while loop stopping is when we get within the tolerance of our exact value. So I'm using the ABS function here, which takes the absolute value of whatever's in the brackets. And that's because we don't know whether our summation is going to approach the exact value from above or below. And that should be greater than our tolerance. So whilst that is true, whilst our approximation is greater than the tolerance, we want to continue taking terms in our summation. And when our summation becomes the same as or less than our tolerance, then we should stop. So our result is simply the value of result before plus 1 over n squared. And we need to increment n. We also need to ensure that we define n and result before we start our while loop. And the last thing we're going to do is use the display command to display the final number of terms required. Now you'll notice that I typed n minus 1 as the number of terms required. And that's because n is incremented before the while loop condition is checked again. So let's check our script. And that's telling us that 6079 terms were required to get within 0.91% of the exact value. This production is copyright, the University of Edinburgh.